It's Gemma Forge. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you're here. Uh, if this is your first time joining me, I'm so glad you came. Uh, we talk about Walt Disney World, Disney Vacation Club, running, all kinds of fun things. So make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment below. We're going to talk today as concisely and precisely as I can about my recent dining experiences at Walt Disney World. So we had some great sit down table service dining experiences on this last trip, some of which I'd done before, some of which I hadn't. Um, one in particular I had never done before and it was phenomenal. So I want to talk about the different restaurants, what we loved, any issues that we may have had, and if I think you should consider it for your next Walt Disney World vacation. So as many of you know, if you've been around for a while, dining at Walt Disney World is a big deal to me. Having that sit down meal experience, it really makes the trip. We love it as a family. I love it when I'm with adults. Um, in this trip, I was with uh, just my oldest son. So we really had great conversation and the meals typically are what I remember. It's what I walk away from the vacation remembering the most. And not necessarily the food, but certainly the atmosphere and did we have a good time or not. So for this trip, we had a lot of great meals and they weren't all uh, expected. And that's one tip I have is you don't always need to make advanced dining reservations. I think over the years we've all gotten so paranoid and certainly for the big headliners, you know, like um, Cinderella's Royal Table or Chef Mickey's or certainly like Ohana, you do want to make those right at that 180 day mark but you guys even the day of there are still reservations available at tons of great restaurants around Walt Disney World especially if you're traveling with a smaller party so there was only two of us this trip and this first restaurant is a great example of that um, I actually made this reservation while we were on the boat headed back from Hollywood Hollywood Studios on our first night uh, we were able to get a reservation no problem and that is Trattoria Al Forno at the Boardwalk now we were staying at Boardwalk it was the our first night I was a little tired and you know one thing that people don't know is even if we'd had an advanced dining reservation we could have always modified that and changed it um, you can do that within 24 hours all day long Disney does not mind if you do that so it came up and I was like you know what Italian sounds really good we've never been there let's give it a try I was blown away by this restaurant. I'd heard about people doing a character breakfast there, but we'd never had dinner there. The interior is gorgeous. The wine list is extensive. The service was excellent. Um, I had a vegetarian dish, and here's a great tip for you. I had the gnocchi, and uh, it actually does not come as a vegetarian dish, but a lot of times what I will do is when we sit down, I'll say, what's your best vegetarian dish or what dish on here can be made to make it vegetarian and most of the sit-down restaurants the servers will have fantastic suggestions this uh the gnocchi actually normally comes with sausage uh, but when i asked the server that question she's like no a lot of my vegetarians get this and they love it and it was very very good so that is kind of if, if you're a vegetarian and you're walking in and you're like I looked at the menu ahead of time and nothing looks good don't let that scare you away from a restaurant ask when you get there and nine times out of ten they will have multiple dishes that they can uh, make into a vegetarian dish for you so definitely ask that question um, I think my son had the pork I just remember my son is a very picky eater and he loved his meal like it's rare that he says he had a, a really good meal he just He's just that way. Um, but he loved his meal. Um, we both had a Caesar salad, which was excellent. It was like a real Caesar salad. Uh, the whole experience, the, the, we were seated at a table that even though it had curtains, it was kind of looking out on the water. And uh, I just loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. I would go here again in a heartbeat. Um, so definitely two thumbs way up for dinner at Trattoria Al Forno. Next up, we went to Tusker House, and again, this was very last minute. We were uh, we were getting ready to ride Expedition Everest, and I was like, you know what? I really feel like I want to have a nice, big, substantial breakfast. And I got on the app, and sure enough, they could take us at Tusker House at 10:30. So um, I had not done breakfast here in a minute. So this was kind of felt like a new experience and I don't think my son has ever done breakfast there. Uh, we did lunch there several years ago, but um, Tusker House was really, really good. Uh, the characters there are Mickey, Daisy, and Donald. I think I have that right. Oh, and Goofy. 
not Donald, Mickey, Daisy, and Goofy. Um, really fun character interaction. Uh, the, the tables are a little close together in that restaurant, so it, it is pretty loud. Uh, so if, if you're a person that gets a little uh, nuts in a loud restaurant, maybe this should not be on your list. Um, the food was very good. Um, I'm gonna give it a solid B. I did not think the food was phenomenal, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I'm used to the Crystal Palace character breakfast where they have the, you know, the omelet bar and I, the puffed French toast, and I just feel like it, it, it could have been that we were there during the transition between breakfast and lunch, um, but I just did not feel like they had it as extensive of a breakfast offering as we have had at Crystal Palace. So for the price, honestly, as much as I loved seeing Mickey um, and Daisy, you know, she's hard to find, and Goofy, of course, I'm not sure I would eat here again. Um, and it, it, it's just, again, it's a very loud restaurant, and I just did not feel like the food, the food that was there was very good, but I didn't feel like the offerings were as good as we have had at other uh, breakfasts at Walt Disney World. So that is my review on Tasker House. I'm gonna give it a thumb up and a half of a thumb. I can't give it two thumbs up, but it was a good experience and we, we did enjoy our time there. Up next, we have Garden Grill. Okay, you can go and watch the video where I talk more about this and you can see what we ate. As a vegetarian, Garden Grill is like, oh my gosh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, every time we've gone, they've had a little bit different vegetarian dish. This time it was kind of a, a rice cake that was very well seasoned and it was amazing. Uh, the food there is just always fresh and consistent. I love the vegetables. I love the salad. I love the rolls. So there's the food piece of it, right? Like love it, love it, love it, love it. The character interaction is amazing. And as opposed to Tusker House, and interestingly, we went to both on the same day, just that's the way it worked out so I can kind of compare and contrast. It's very quiet. Garden Grill, I think, of all the character interaction meals is the most quiet. So if you have kids that are very sensory overload sensitive, my kids always were, um, I think this is a great place to go. Because it's in the round and the tables are kind of one layer here and then one layer on the floor, you don't get that claustrophobic tons of tables together. It feels very spread out. The characters came by multiple times. In fact, it got to the point where we were just like, hey, you know, you're just kind of waving to them. It's very personal. Um, if you watch the video I did of that day, you'll see the interaction that we had. And I um, I just love it. I just, I, it may seem silly to say that it's a peaceful character meal, but it really, really is. I think the food is phenomenal. I think the character interaction is phenomenal. I love that it spins and you're looking out over living with the land. And it's just a, a very, I'm gonna say peaceful, again, I, I know, it's crazy. It's a peaceful Disney restaurant, uh, but I think it's a great uh, experience. So definitely that one gets two thumbs way up for me. I hope to try it for breakfast sometime soon because we've never done the breakfast there. And then lastly, we had my birthday dinner at the Brown Derby. Now. The last time I was at the Brown Derby, if you'll remember, I had the flu. <laughs> I didn't know I had the flu. I found that out at Urgent Care later. So kind of wanted a redemption trip to Brown Derby, but this was also my birthday dinner. And this meal, now I did have the um, grouper, which also comes with a lobster tail. I do eat fish occasionally, not often. So technically I'm a pescatarian, not a vegetarian. Um, it was amazing. We had the um, starter size of the Cobb salad, which can be ordered vegetarian, by the way, which I love. It's kind of what they're famous for. Um, so definitely you want to get the salad. Their rolls are amazing. They have the butter with sea salt that's phenomenal. Um, our server was excellent, uh, had great wine, was very attentive without being overly so. And then for my birthday, they brought out the grapefruit cake with a candle. And it was, it for a special occasion, I love this restaurant. Now, I have heard people tell me they've not had great uh, service there, uh, but I have never had a bad meal there. And I've had the vegetarian, uh, they have a pho, uh, like a noodle bowl that's really, really good. Um, I've always had great meals here. And again, I'm sure if you ask them, they probably have meals that they can, you know, make vegetarian for you. Uh, but it just, you walk in and you just don't feel like you're, you're at Disney World anymore in a good way. Like you feel like you really did walk into old Hollywood. And if you look at all of the historic pictures that they have, even all of the booths have a, a, a 
a phone jack, it's not a real phone jack, but because in the original Brown Derby, that was so like high-end producers could talk on their phone. You know, they'd bring the phone over to the table when you had to plug a phone in. Uh, it's just um, a very high-end time. I would recommend, if you're gonna go there, dressing up a little bit, but I'm just that way. And, and I did wear my Monsters Inc. dress and um, it just felt special. So if you're going for a special occasion, if you're gonna be around Hollywood Studios, I definitely recommend Brown Derby for dinner. So those are all the sit down places we ate. Um, we didn't do a ton of counter service, so I may or may not do a separate video about the counter service restaurants where we ate, because uh, they're all places that we are tried and true that we've eaten before, but I hope this helps. Um, I know that Disney, you know, the menus are always changing. Sometimes the chefs are changing, so you never really know. But if you're wondering about the restaurant specifically that I mentioned today, I can tell you without hesitation that they were all great and we had a phenomenal time. Do you have questions? Put those below. Let me know. Are there Disney restaurants that you've been wanting to try? And are any of the ones you want to try on my list? Because I would love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.